That's a mess. All right guys, so it's been about two weeks since we bottled last. And if you remember in that video, it boiled over the pan. Oh, it was a terrible mess. It really was. And it was all my fault, of course. That's one of those stupid mistakes that I do and it was just stupid. What, I, what happened was I was trying to get more syrup in the pan than I should have and we put almost 60 gallons in that keg. And when we did, I only had about this much space on the top. So when I put my DE in, uh, it kind of bubbled up and pff, off it went. It was a mess. So I had to pull it all down, clean it all up. We got the stove looking pretty good. I'm gonna put it back together and today we're gonna make this. You guys see it? You know what it is? Smoked maple. I came up with a way to smoke maple just like I smoke pork barbecue. It is delicious. So come along and let me show you how we're gonna get it done. The first thing we gotta do guys is get our stove put back together. And that includes all my pieces parts on here. A few years back at during the Maple Festival, I thought how cool would it be to have some syrup boiling on the stove and make the place smell like it did when we were making syrup. And it did for a while until it boiled over. When that happened, it smelled like burnt sugar. <laughs> it was terrible, terrible, terrible. You guys see that? What a mess. syrup. In order to smoke maple syrup, everybody, you need two things. One, you need maple syrup, and two, you need smoke. The way I'm going to generate the smoke is through a smoke generator that I bought online from a company called Smoke It. It's a nice generator. I think it works really well. This application, I probably need a little something different, but I'm going to tell you, for the time being, this is working well. Let me show you what I've done to my pot in order to make this smoker work. All right, that hole right there is one that I drilled in the pot to accept the smoker tube right here. What I'm doing here is I'm emptying some out of the pan. I don't need this much for this particular batch. And we're gonna turn that right there into maple cream or maple butter, I think some folks call it. Really, really good stuff. Note this, you see how pretty shiny this is? It's not gonna be that way when we're done. It's all gonna be smoked up. Usually it takes me a couple days to get it clean. The first thing we need to do is get this tube into the, into the pot. It hangs in there. Actually, you know what? I'm having a complete senior moment. <laughs> there we go. The next step in the process is to get this tube into that hole where the thermometer was. We're just gonna slide it right on in. And I made these little hooks that kind of look like curtain hooks. And when I get them on there, there we go. They're gonna hang this, this little smoker on the side of this pot. Now that smoker's right where it needs to be. We've bled off about enough syrup for this point, so we're gonna turn it off. And now I remember why I took this guy off. Because you don't want that valve, you don't want this to get burnt. So we're just gonna set it up here. We're gonna take this syrup that we that we uh, bled off there. We're just gonna let it sit on the stove for a couple of hours while we're doing this process. At the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you how I make the best smoke possible for both my pork and this maple syrup. You can go ahead, guys. All right, we're gonna use a torch. We're gonna get, I, put some, I put some paper in the bottom, then began to stack it, put some more paper on it, and now we're gonna use the torch to get it fired up. Now, although that may seem like you've got some smoke, you really don't have any smoke yet. So what we're gonna do, I have to have this top here. We also want the top for the pot. All right, this is an air pump. 
There we go. Okay. By the end of this day, I'm gonna smell like hickory. It's gonna be really cool. It's not gonna be too long, guys, before the room begins to fill with smoke. It's gonna hang out way up here. We've got our windows open, got our doors open. This is gonna bleed out. Whole barn's gonna smell like barbecue. I'm pretty excited about that. I love that smell. Do you guys like barbecue? And if so, what kind do you like? Are you Kansas City, Texas, North Carolina? What's your favorite style? Is there a style I haven't mentioned? Let me know in the comments below. I love barbecue. I used to go to Virginia Barbecue every day for lunch. Now my friend Phil, who used to own Virginia Barbecue, owns his own barbecue company called Wildwood Barbecue in Powhatan, Virginia. If you ever get a chance to go to Powhatan, Virginia, go to Wildwood Barbecue. You're gonna love it. He does an outstanding job. I love barbecue. Right now we got plenty of smoke happening in here. So at the present, I'm gonna go out and fix my son's bike so he can have some fun with it. I'm gonna come back in the next, I don't know, 15 to 30 minutes, continue doing that process to make sure the smoke generator is generating enough smoke. And in about three to four hours, we're gonna bottle this. And then I can mail it to you guys if you want some. All right, here's a quick tour of the setup. We have a pot of syrup. We've got the smoke generator. We have the tube over to the air pump. And what's happening, the smoke is being generated inside of here. It's being picked up by this tube and it's being pushed air through this, through the tank or the tub right here. If you look in there, you see the embers, that's gonna create the heat necessary for the smoke to be generated. As you can tell, it's smoking pretty good. It smells like smoke. It smells like smoke in here. We're, we're smoking maple, Isabel. <laughs> it's gross. Smoked maple, it smells like hickory. What'd you say? Hickory dickory dot? Yeah. The smoke went in the Clock? pot? Well, there's something dead over here. Alright, let's go check it out. One hour later. You guys can see in there we still got some embers and the smoke is still coming in. Not as much. Look at that top. Ooh, it's messy. Now what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and start heating it up. I was heated up earlier this morning, but now we need to get it up to 211 degrees to check the sugar content so we can bottle it. So the next stage in this process is to set the pr uh, the next stage of the process is to set the filter press up so we can filter this and we're gonna do it in a coffee urn. So it's gonna go from here to the filter press to a coffee urn, and that's how we're gonna bottle it. What we're doing right now is checking the sugar content. We're looking for 59 bricks or 66% sugar, and we are dead on. That's exactly where we need to be. So now it's time to filter, get it into the coffee urn, and start bottling. Just like our batches of maple syrup taste different from, from batch to batch or an early season to a late season syrup, this is gonna change too. It's never gonna be perfect. Or let me say, it's never going to be exactly the same. So sometimes you're going to get something that's really a little bit smokier, and sometimes it may be a little bit milder, but it's always going to have that smooth hickory taste. Ooh, that smells so good. All right, guys, let's get it filtered up. In order to filter today, guys, we're using just one of our banks of the filter. There's a whole row of these, um, but we only need one because we're not doing but maybe two to three gallons max. We got our bottles over here, and now the key is to get this thing into the bottles so we can get the rest of the syrup out of the pot. So this should go fairly quickly. I never used a coffee urn until, until I started doing this syrup. I've always had a bottler, and I'm grateful for having that bottler. But to do this little amount of syrup in a full bottler is just a lot of wasted energy. So 
you guys remember I was gonna tell you the secret to this? The key, in my opinion, is using wood that still has bark on it. That bark is where you get your flavor. The wood is good, but it's not the same as the bark. And I've done this on many batches, and that's what I came up with. I've done it with hardwood, I've done it with bark, and the or barked wood, if you will, and that bark gives it the most flavor. About a week ago, we bottled a lot of syrup. Probably the most I've ever done myself in a day. And it was, it was probably 100, 102, 105 gallons. It was a lot of syrup. We had a little problem. That was a challenge. You can check that video out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Today, I'm only doing a couple gallons. Now, I do have over on the stove not, uh, more syrup, and we're gonna turn that into um, maple butter or maple cream. But we're not doing that today. Today, we're just getting up the temperature. Once it comes to temperature, we put it in the refrigerator overnight or maybe two nights, and that will become a taffy and with that taffy, we're going to mix it and make it into maple cream. It's absolutely delicious. So the next stage in the process is to let them cool. And after they've cooled, we're going to label them. And uh, our guest who's staying with us owns a restaurant in Harrisonburg, Virginia. It's Pickford Seafood. You guys are ever in the Harrisonburg area, you gotta go try Will's place out. That guy makes some incredible carrot crab cakes. Absolutely amazing is all I can say. There's more crab in there than anything else. In fact, it's almost too much crab. But don't tell, don't tell him that. <laughs> so as I'm doing this, I gotta keep my eyes on that other pot. Because you never know when that thing could boil over. I'm gonna get this finished up bottling. I'm gonna come back in a little bit and I'm gonna show you how we do the labels. The last step in this process is to label it. And I've made these labels up, let me show them to you. These are my labels. And they may be just a few millimeters too big. If they were a little bit smaller, it would probably be easier to label. But we're talking about a small bottle here. And as a result, you want as much real estate on that bottle as you can to share the goodness of this product. And in our case, let me show you something else that's on here. Might not be able to make it out. Colossians 3.23. We work for the Lord. So I'm going to label probably, I don't know, 48 of these. So I've got enough ready. And then I'm going to take it down to our guest, at, you know, Will Pickford, who is going to take this to his store in Harrisonburg and begin to sell it. Right now, this is not listed on our website. We do have it available. If you want it, just send me an email and I'll be sure to get you a bottle. It's $5 a bottle plus a little bit for shipping. And I'd recommend getting one of these bottles and maybe an eight or a 12 ounce too, because it won't be more than the normal shipping. I think our standard rates may be $11. So let's go over again how we did this. We basically took our maple syrup, put it into a pot, put a smoker on the side of the pot fired up the smoker and let it smoke for three to four hours. When that was done, we checked the sugar content to make sure we were at the right percent or in my case, bricks. And we were, and then we filtered it and we bottled it. And now we're labeling it. And that's it guys. It's pretty simple. The longer you smoke it, the more smoke flavor obviously you're gonna have. So remember, if you wanna do this at home, use wood with bark on it, especially if you're using hickory because that's where you're gonna get most of your flavor. I've done it both ways, and I'm telling you, that's the best way to do it. So guys, thanks a lot for watching our videos. We really appreciate it. We hope you enjoy them as much as we enjoy making them for you, especially ones like this, because I truly enjoy this product. It is absolutely delicious. Now, in a couple days, we're gonna be making some maple cream. We'll show you how we're gonna do that. We've already started the boil, and all we're basically doing in that process is getting it to 235 degrees, and we gotta cool it down. So we're gonna cool down the refrigerator overnight, and then we'll put it in the machine and see if we can make some delicious maple cream. It's only maple syrup, pretty good. So again, thanks a lot for watching. Do consider giving us a thumbs up, and until next time,
Got to bless you guys. Since I've got that other syrup on the stove, I can't leave the kitchen because if that syrup boils over, it's going to be a mess. So I'm going to label a few more bottles. Probably get a whole case done, which is 48 to a case. These are two ounce bottles. Absolute deliciousness, folks. So guys, I haven't done this in a long time. I'd like to share a bottle of this syrup with one of you guys. The first person to put Virginia's only organic maple syrup is Milgat Farms in the comments. I'll send you a bottle of this. Don't put your address in there or any other contact information. I'll get with you in the comments and we'll get this bottle out to you, okay?